and welcome back to Amy's Earth Vegan Soaps channel. Today I wanted to show you a little do-it-yourself project that I think you might enjoy. So rather than showing you the usual soaps that I make, I'm going to show you how we can change a box like this into a mould. So household item you could use this kind of cotton we drink a lot of this stuff in our house so this was the easiest one to get my hands on but orange juice pineapple juice name your juice um i have measured out this to be nine centimeters by nine centimeters and at the edge it's six centimeters so what we're going to do today is make a rainbow soap. You can do this in your own home. It's a really easy soap to make. It's it's not a quick soap to make, have to be fair, because the layers do have to dry. And because we're going to use melt and pour, you can buy melt and pour in your craft shop, your local craft shop or online. Um, I buy my uh, a place called the Soap Kitchen and also from Amazon if I need it in a hurry. Although, you know, I try not to buy so many things. I like to support smaller businesses. So um, I do try and buy from Craftivator, the soup kitchen, places like that. So that's what we're going to do today. So here is our melt and pour, it's quite heavy, it's very easy to use, you literally are going to take a spoon, scoop out, measure how much you need and put in the microwave for 10 second, 20 second blasts. We're using quite small amounts of soap because obviously the mould is very tiny. So that's your melt and pour. I'm trying to I'm trying to use things that you will find in your own kitchen. So rather than micas or special colours, these again I got on off Amazon. Um, just ordinary food colourings. Now it does say soap and bath bomb safe. So if you're going to buy food colouring, do um, check that you can use them in food colouring. So we have six layers today. We're going to do. Purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. I know it says rose, but honestly, it does come out as red, I promise, because I've made it before. So what I'm going to do, because um, the sides of this carton are quite flexible, what happens is you fill the mould and you get rounded edges. So I have, here's one I made earlier, Blue Peter a moment for those of you who remember, made some cord to support the edges. Now the cord I measured specifically for this cotton so no matter what you use, what are the cartons you're going to use, measure your cord for your cotton. Like I say, this is nine centimetres across so a little under nine centimeters and I am going to not put it right to the edge because otherwise the um, mold will be wobbly we're not worrying about the bottom part because that's quite supported but this wobbly part here is the thing we're looking for so we are going to tape this cardboard to all our edges it will then hold, she says, hopefully, because you're leaning with me here, ladies and gentlemen. I have not actually done this before. I have made a rainbow soap in this kind of mould for a project I was doing. However, it did come out bulged, so I figured 
that if I put cardboard around it, we'd have some nice straight edges. That is the plan. And it makes sense to me that that's what would happen. So you see how that's not going to push out once all these are in. Okay. So our third side. Tight on. And then our final piece. This is the joys of crafting. Most of the stuff that you need for crafting, you likely have in your house. Because even if you don't have thin cord like this, you're bound to have something that could hold this together. Okay, now, the only issue we are gonna have with this is the inside, as you can see. Now, because this is a homemade project, I am not totally bothered about that. You may well be. So, if this is the case, and also, if you want to use this mould again, what I would suggest is putting freezer paper inside. Measure your sides, put freezer paper, and line the mould. I'm not going to be using this again. When we open this up, I'm literally going to tear it. Um, because, quite frankly, it's actually just easier to cut another one than it is to mess about with freezer paper. That's just my opinion. Um, I'm kind of looking at that and hoping that it doesn't bulge. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this a little larger, a little tighter. Do you know what? We'll learn together and we'll see. Okay, how are you going to measure how much soap you need in this mould? Okay, a little bit of maths. I'm going to add this in the description below so you don't need to keep flicking through the video or pausing and writing this down. We are going to work out. So if I put this on my scales and filled to where I want with water, it would work out at 350 grams. But because oil is lighter than water, if I only melted 350 grams, we would have less soap than we would have had water. So you are going to times your nine centimeters, six centimeters, and nine centimeters to find out your volume. So nine by nine by six. We then get 486, 486. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use 486 grams and because we have six layers, we're going to divide that 486 by six, which gives us 81 grams a layer. So we are going to make six layers of 81 grams of soap. Let's get started. Okay, because I've started to doubt myself a little bit, I've added more sellotape. I don't know whether it's gonna make a difference. I'm sure we will find out, but Yes, well, we'll find out. Okay, so earlier I said to scoop the melt and pour out with a spoon. To be honest, that's the old way I used to do it. Now what I do is I pull it from the edges, like so. And with a little brute force, oh, it slipped right out. I did actually push that out a little bit more. And then taking an extremely ridiculous chopping knife that my husband loves to cook with, because he likes to cook Asian food and so forth, you can slice off pieces of the edge which believe me it's an awful lot easier than trying to scoop it out with a spoon so what we're going to do is trying to get our soap put that in there for now get our soap in as smaller cubes as possible because the smaller it is the easier it melts which you know makes sense um, and we want it to melt quickly because that saves time. So let's chop it really small. And I'm 
there we go that should be enough I'm going to get my scales put my jug on tear my scales off and I'm going to say 80 grams I said 81 earlier but that's we not we don't have to be specific so that's 57 68 71 72 70 oh 80 there we go 80 what we're going to do now is blast this in the microwave on 10 second bursts until we're melted here we are back with our melted soap as you can see do not let it boil it's not very nice having bubbles in your soap um so if you do 99% rubbing alcohol you can spray that and it gets rid of all the bubbles very handy what I also do to help the melt and pour stick into the mold is we'll spray it into the mold okay so we're now going to start with our purple and you can put as many drops into this as you like I'm going to go with just two for now and then I've got a spatula, I'm going to stir it. If you don't have a spatula, use a spoon. This is all about being able to use items you have at home to be able to make this soap. Okay, now I like that colour. It's a nice soft colour and it's a rainbow soap so we don't want it super deep. I'm now going to carefully, the slower you pour it, the last bubbles we have into the mold scrape it in there we go see the bubbles now don't see the bubbles there you are, there you're not. We're going to try and keep this as still and straight as possible because that will give us a nice straight line. We now need to wait for this to harden. That can take up to 10 to 15 minutes. Be patient because if when you put the second layer in, the bottom layer is not solid, you're going to break the layer. So be careful, be patient. Here we are again with our second layer. Those of you with hawk eyes may notice that there is a small amount of purple still left in this jug. I'm not worried about that because the next colour is blue. The great thing with melt and pour is it just peels straight off and you can melt it again and it's still soap because it's already formulated soap there's no curing process um, I mean I'm not wearing gloves here because this obviously is soap I'm not going to sell if I was um, going to sell the soap it will definitely I would definitely be wearing gloves just for hygiene um, but you can see it's doing me absolutely no harm because the soap is already cured the other thing though with melt and pour is it does work quite quickly which is why the more astute of you will have noticed there are no words of wisdom in this video this week and um, there just isn't time because no sooner has the soap melted than we need to get straight on to pouring it I've got this to hand as you can probably see here at the side always 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 have that to hand it's very handy if you don't I mean in all fairness it's not very expensive if you're going to do this regularly you know um, as something you might be interested in doing but hand sanitizer is it does exactly the should do this exactly the same job because it is 99% alcohol. So try it with hand sanitizer, see how it goes. Okay, so now we're going to add another 81 or 80 grams into our jug. 70. I like these small cubes because when you're working with such a small amount of layers it's easier to get to 
the gram you need. Da -da, 80 grams. And now to get melting. And there we go, all melted. Two drops of our blue. Stir in. A nice swirly colour, isn't that beautiful? I'm stirring a little bit too vigorously because I am causing soap bubbles to form, which is never a good thing. So I'm going to spray that a little bit. I'm going to quickly show you the mould. You may be able to see, if you go in and press it very gently, now this has been about 10, maybe 15 minutes. You can maybe see a film on it, I'm not really sure how focused you are at the moment. Um, and it's a nice shiny film, but just for certain, take your finger, we press in. I'm going to spray our rubbing alcohol in the mould to make sure that this soap adheres and very gently, straight into the middle, slowly, easily, Take your time, and we go. Now you may be able to see soap bubbles from there. So I'm going to quick spritz, and there we go. On to our next one. I'm probably going to speed up these next few layers because I'm going to imagine you've probably got the idea by now, so rather than you sitting here through the tedious ramblings of me telling you soap, melt, drop your dye into the stair, pour, I'll speed it up and then we'll get to the end when it's time to unmould. Hopefully we'll have a lovely rainbow soap. Here we are. I actually have left this overnight. It doesn't need to be left overnight. After approximately, I'd say leave it maybe an hour if you want to carry on doing it um, on the day. I only left it overnight because I was filming quite late last night and I was too tired, so I thought I'd leave it until today when I was a little bit more awake and then I didn't make any mistakes. So, what I'm going to now do is cut down these edges and start peeling. In fact, what I might do is actually cut the cardboard off straight away. And what I have noticed with this cardboard, as you can probably see, is that I maybe perhaps have had it too tight. Um, I don't know whether you can see that but it's bent inwards um, rather than straight, but hey ho, lessons learned. Maybe next time I'll just not put it on as tightly. Um, we'll see. So you might be able to see that, the, the, I can't see if you can, it's peeling away. 
see that so you know for a definite that it's set once it starts easily peeling away so you can probably do that first of all start pulling the edges away um, and then what we're going to do I'm going to take my very very sharp extremely sharp because I cut myself with it the other day and it wouldn't stop bleeding for ages craft knife I do love it because it's very good it cuts right through whatever I needed to cut through um, and first of all take the cardboard off which then should just come off all the way around once I've started to them on. As I said at the beginning of this video I'm not bothered about this mould. I can make another one, not a big deal. Um, if you want to keep this as a mould, as I said yesterday, freezer paper, line the freezer paper. Measure your mould, figure out how much freezer paper you need and secure the freezer paper with a little bit of sellotape on your edges. And then what you do once it's set, release the sellotape, pull the freezer paper out, and then it should easily feel away. I don't have any freezer paper, I must admit. It's not something I use because most of the time I'm using silicone moulds, um, so I don't need it. Um, if I do it this way, you might be able to see it a little bit better which would be more beneficial and I'm going to tear you can already I hope see those fabulously clear lines don't worry about the soap no harm can come to the soap the thing with melt and pour is it's solid which is the other reason I am not going to cut it with my wire cutter so there we have or soap let me show you now I have to tell you although I don't have a light handy oh hang on a minute let me see if I can't move my little lamp here and bring it down let's do a little bit of okay so you might be able to see this because you know this is to me it's just amazing so if I shine the light through. Can you see how absolutely amazing those colours are? Are they not just like gorgeous? Imagine a slice of this sitting on a windowsill or in your bathroom. It does look amazing. I haven't put any fragrance oil in this particular soap. Um, I'd like to say that was a conscious decision but I simply forgot. Um, that's what happens when you film late at night. But everything else turned out all right. <laughs> so I suppose we can count that as a blessing. There we go. All right. So, melt and pour is very, very solid. So, a sharp knife is the best option. I'm actually going to put a mat on my table. because I don't really want to cut into and I have to tell you right now I'm rubbish at cutting soap freehand so if this all turns out dreadful hopefully you'll have more success so we know it's three and a half inches so it's totally up to you you can do this smaller thinner bars you can do these half inch bars if you want if you want a nice thin bar maybe that might be an option that's actually sitting quite handy I might do that, to be honest, because I don't really want great big lumpen inch bars of, of rainbow soap, and it means we get uh, more soap out of our bars. So I'm going to, very carefully and not particularly professionally, mark my soap bars. Um, go the other way, be easier to see. Mark them by the half inch. I know, I'm so sorry, my hand is in the way at this moment. But you will see it in a minute. Again, with handmade craft. You have to remember that things are not going to be precise. This is not done on some great big shop floor in a machine 
So handmade, and always remember that, is never going to be perfect. I don't know if you can see those slight cuts I have put in there. Okay, along the way. So we're going to try, in fact if I'm really clever, I will do it the other way, won't I? Because then at least I have something to line up with. So let's do this. I've got myself lost there a minute. Half, half, half. All right, that's how we get on. I'm going to turn this slightly. I'm going to line my knife that I have just sharpened because this soup is quite tough, I can tell you. And I'm going to press down. Oh, I know this isn't straight. I can tell it's not straight. I did warn you. Come off. And it also is sticking quite harshly to the knife. <laughs> it doesn't want to come off. Oh, I might cut myself here. Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord, heavens above. Now, cutting that, I've actually dislodged that layer, so do be careful. Um, if you want that layer to go back again, a little bit of water in there, rub it together, and it will stick, because it's soap. And let's be honest, you all know how sticky soap can be. So, I'm not overly worried. There we go. Sorted. I might just chop that up and use it as a confetti soap. So let's see how we go. I'm trying to see now whether there's a... And there isn't. It's just that soap and maybe it's the way I cut it. So I'm going to try and go straight down. Again. That I think is a better one. Be careful trying to get this off your knife. One for fingers and two for taking your soap, um, knocking the layers off. Oh my goodness gracious me, this is so much harder. And yeah, that layer is going to come off too. So, this might not be the best option. I love the way you see these video YouTube videos. And they make it look like the soap slices right off and there's no problems. I'm going to take that bit off. And I'm going to try not to cut my finger off on the video, which would not be a good look. And you know what I'm going to try to do ne this next time? I'm going to try and I'm going to stick that together again with water. It will be fine. I'm going to spray this with a bit of rubbing alcohol and see if that helps because getting the soap off there is a nightmare. So let's try again, shall we? I told you you were going to learn with me on this one, didn't I? No fancy cosmetics here, all straight down the middle. There we go. Let's hope it slides off a little bit easier with the rubbing alcohol. It doesn't. Oh, here we go, we're twisting, we're twisting, we're twisting, we're twisting, yay! We've got one that survived. <laughs> Praise heavens. Okay, I'm going to cut the rest of these up and then I'm going to show you what we've got. guys our lovely rainbow soups I'm going to do another quick flash with the light so you can see how amazing they look underneath it are they not so cool you could do a little bit of clean up 
under the bottom here if you wanted. I'm going to move these soaps out of the way so you can see a little bit better. Because with the cotton, you can see there's like a very small edge here that's not perfectly straight. However, they do still stand up, as you can see. Oh, no, that one's not going to stand up. Nope. Okay, for the most part they stand up. <laughs> so you could, if you so desired, display them two at a time in your bathroom. Lying down, leaning back, standing up, whatever you desire. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this well, experimental, let's be honest, um, journey. The last time I cut these they were thicker, which maybe made them a little bit easier than um, the thinner bars. Um, and have a go yourself. They are so easy to make. Melt and pour a mould of whatever description you decide and a microwave. Or um, a double boiler method, you don't necessarily need a microwave, you can use the double boiler method which um, is, is just as handy. I um, prefer the microwave because the quicker and melt and pour does harden very quickly. Until the next time everyone, I will say farewell and um, do comment below if you have had a go or if you have any questions. Um, if you've enjoyed this video like and subscribe to my channel and thank you always for coming by and watching me. Bye for now!